Welcome, family, friends, graduates. My name is Kostis Maglaras, I'm the dean of the school, and it is truly an honor and a pleasure to be celebrating the remarkable executive MBA classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. We don't... It is not every year that we get to celebrate three classes in one ceremony, and hopefully we're not going to be repeating that uh, anytime soon. Uh, but there is nothing ordinary about the time that we have gone through, and there is nothing ordinary about all of you here today. So uh, it is truly an honor and a pleasure. Pursuing an MBA, uh, an executive MBA at that, means simultaneously devoting 100% of your time to multiple things, from classes, to your jobs, to your life at home, your family. And this, we all understand, you don't need to have taken financial accounting or stats or business analytics or your favorite quant class to know that the math just simply do not work out. Uh, it takes an extraordinary person to sign in for this type of juggling act and an, uh, with the understanding that even the slightest of things can really throw off the balance that you're trying to keep. So, but you did it all, and you did it all with grace and, of course, always with determination. That's who you are, and that's who, what you brought to our own community. Even at, at the, in the context of a once-in-a-century pandemic that we all faced with you while you were at school. And that's why you really, we really owe you a big round of applause today. Thank you. <laughs> Moreover, for all of you, the fact is that you, were, you weren't just navigating the pandemic as students but as business leaders in your own right. Simultaneously of coming here to take courses, you were making tough choices. You were managing a rapid transition to remote work. You were closing down, then opening up, then closing down again, then opening up again. You were trying to follow whatever public health guidance we had in place at that point in time. And you were trying to keep your own teams and your own customers as safe as possible. Your experiences, leading your companies through this pandemic, ones that you shared in our classrooms and ones that you shared in your Zoom happy hours, is truly the greatest seminar in crisis management. 
Every difficult decision you made, every success, every setback, brought pieces of our coursework, hopefully, to life in a very, very uh, distinct manner. And it gave your fellow students a deeper understanding of what we were doing in class, but moreover, I believe, it gave them invaluable support for what they should be doing in their own organizations because they were dealing simultaneously with the same issues. And it gave us, your professors, really a lesson forever. Each class that we honor today learned and studied through different phases of that crisis. Wrapping up coursework under ambulance sirens and waiting for 7 p.m. applauses for the first responders. Studying for finals and skipping winter breaks and winter holidays simply because caseloads were rising. Or refreshing vaccine appointment websites frantically either between classes or maybe during classes. No matter when you completed your degree, you adapted beautifully to your surroundings, and you truly adapted to an educational environment and an educational process that was new. It was new to you, and it was new to us. You found ways to stay close in the age of social distancing and to be engaged at the moment of possible maximum burnout. You inspired us to sharpen our focus on what matters and what's driving change in society, from climate to digital transformation, from entrepreneurship to finance, and, of course, in putting the question of how businesses can impact society at the center of the conversation. From masking to distancing and to these endless disinfected classroom classes, you help our school and your workplaces to navigate this singular moment in their history with grit, with humor, and with determination. And as your professors, you couldn't be, we couldn't be prouder. And we cannot really wait to see what you're going to do with your MBAs, earned under some of the hardest circumstances, but equipping you in a way that you can change the world. Our ceremony today is a testament to your demonstrated excellence and the community you built during all of that time. And for that, I want you to know that we couldn't be more grateful. Thank you. Now, while I'm thanking all of you, I also want to thank our administration and our faculty who truly came together and delivered more in-person classes and more in-person experiences than any of our peer schools and any other schools in this university, pretty much by an order of magnitude. Columbia Business School, as a community, <laughs> CBS as a community showed over the past three years how agile, innovative, and strategic it can be how forward-thinking we are in the face of volatility, and how impactful we can be in the middle of all of it. Like in the work of Carrie Chan in optimizing healthcare provision when health systems were critically stressed. How Ken Daniels' work brought out our best understanding of climate extreme event risk and its implication on carbon pricing. How we launched a think tank last year, and we first grabbed the first topics that we're grappling with is the interface between business and society. Or how Dan Russo's work explores how AI, and specifically reinforcement learning, can drive engagement, in his case, at Spotify. Now, I now have the honor to present the Executive MBA Commitment to Excellence Award, an important EMBA tradition that has been in place for more than 30 years. It's actually an award established by the EMBA class of 1991 in memory of the high standards set by the professor, Margaret Chandler. We presented to a deserving member of the faculty for their outstanding contributions to the class. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce the recipient of the Commitment to Excellence Award for the EMBA Global Americas and Europe class of 2021 and co-recipient of the EMBA New York Saturday class of 2022, my friend that we started together uh, at the school many, many years ago, Professor Paul Ingram.
So I am honored to be recognized by two, cla two classes. So I have two minutes to say something about, about uh, 200 wonderful students in those classes. Uh, E&M 2022 started in the summer of 2020. So this is the first, actually, the only semester we had that was all virtual. And I really thought a lot about them in the subsequent two years and their experience and keeping my fingers crossed that it was becoming more and more like the, the normal joyful educational experience that we get at the Columbia Business School. Cluster E had a particularly cohesive culture. You know that I measure the cultures of, yeah, uh, the cultures of classes. And in 10 years I've done that, Cluster E was the most cohesive. And as you can imagine, we relied on that cohesion at some of the most challenging moments. Cluster M shared my own value of creativity, and that was so useful when we were finding new ways to learn together. These two classes inspired me. They taught me a lot at a low point in my own teaching career, and I'm always going to be grateful and to remember them. As for Global A&E 2021, it was obvious from our very first days together in May 2019 that they were players who were going to take responsibility for their own learning and success. They demonstrated so much energy and engagement in our first week together uh, in London that I still have vivid memories of the encounters and the conversations we had in that week. The same energy was still apparent in December 2020 when we endured hybrid learning and a blizzard, the hybrid learning was worse, to complete an elective class that was for many of them their final in the program. Their unique value as a class was relationships, and I know the relationships they built sustain them throughout the program and are going to be a precious resource for them for the rest of their lives. To all of the graduates today, I'd like to remind you of something that we talked about in our class at the beginning of your program. Moments of great achievement, like today, can be traps. You should savor the wonderful feelings of accomplishment that you have earned, but you should not wallow in them. Have a celebratory weekend, but on Monday morning, ask yourself what comes next. It is better to travel, hopefully, than to arrive. It is now my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by the EMBA Global Americas and Europe class of 2021 to speak today, Monica Dominguez. Good morning, Dean faculties, families, and fellow graduates. Jimmy Dean once said, I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. Three years ago, all of us here today decided that we wanted to navigate a different path in our lives by joining the EMBA Global Program. Some of us knew exactly what we wanted. Others were using the journey to figure out what would come next. I remember being so impressed and slightly intimidated by my classmates when we had our first social event on a boat ride in London. Everyone was so mature, so worldly, and had such diverse backgrounds. I also learned that EMBA students know how to drink a lot. <laughs> As a group, we survived some trying times, the first being the initial waves of homework when you realize I have to do all this, fly to a class for a week per month, and work full time, I'm sure many of you thought, what did I get myself into? Luckily, we had a team to support us and share the load. However, it did add yet another thing to the list, Zoom meetings about homework. I lucked out and had an amazing group. I truly could not have done it without my four teammates in front of me here today. In class, we heard from our brilliant professors. Professor Ingram taught us there was so much more to learn from a jazz band beyond the music, to observe the subtleties. Professor Ziv taught us about balance sheets and the importance of the purple marker. 
To all of our amazing professors, we thank you for help mold our future. Beyond our studies, I learned so much from my classmates. You shared your life experience, advice, and your wisdom with me. If I ever need to staff a startup company, I know who to call. Whether we hung out on a class trip or chatted while refueling on coffee and snacks on a class break, I'm so grateful I had a chance to know you. Our time together was cut short, but we made it through the rough seas to be here today. I'm so proud of what you've accomplished. You tested your capacity and you conquered new horizons. As we look to the future, there will always be some level of uncertainty and challenging times, but you are all willing to adjust your sails to reach that destination. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2021. It is now my pleasure to introduce my classmate, who was also chosen by our class to speak today, Zara Hayat. Dean Meglaris, honored faculty, administration, dear family, friends, and fellow graduates, today marks a significant milestone for each of us, and it is to our loved ones that we truly owe our sincere gratitude. I remember my favorite memory as a child was collecting caterpillars. I spent endless hours collecting these little guys during recess, and I would build these well-ventilated homes for them and place them on our balcony and hope that my mother would not find them. These tiny creatures seemed so fascinating. It's not easy going from a creepy, crawling insect to becoming a beautiful butterfly. And I was curious about their transformation. As children, our curiosity is supercharged. We have an insatiable capacity and desire to learn something new, to jump into the unknown, to fearlessly participate without discrimination. And sometimes we're even humbled by what we discover. But the older we get, life demands responsibilities like paying the bills, doing taxes, changing diapers. Then May of 2019 arrives, and we come together as Columbia Embas. And a similar type of curiosity to the one we had as children emerges. We discovered our true identities in Professor Ingram's class, where we realized that we didn't really know what our values were. We uncovered fact from fantasy in Professor Ziv's class, where we realized that a five-hour exam actually takes five days to complete. <laughs> and we realized that every cause has an effect. Group dinners, late nights, not sleeping, does affect the quality of your speech the next day. <laughs> and then we endured a pandemic. Empty cities, endless Zoom calls, isolation, fear, growing inequalities, political turmoil, but a lot of hope. Everything changed, except our curiosity. My fellow graduates, did you know that curiosity invigorates the area of the brain that regulates pleasure and reward. It stimulates the hippocampus and releases dopamine to give you a natural high. No wonder we were so excited for the next time we met. Despite all the wonderful things that we have accomplished before this program, it is our curiosity with transformation that brought us to this program and got us through it. I am certain that the same curiosity will serve each of us well as we forge ahead as global citizens seeking fairness and compassion, more confident, more confused, more passionate, more creative, and even more curious. I can think of no better advice than that of Alan Toffler, quote, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn." Unquote. Congratulations, fellow graduates. Thank you. The Executive MBA Distinguished Service Award is presented to the graduate chosen by classmates 
as deserving of special recognition for their contributions to the spirit and experience of the class. It is my pleasure to present the EMBA Global Class of 2021 Distinguished Service Award to Rafael Salazar. Thank you, Sarah, and your faculty members. And this is going to be a short speech. I only have one minute, Professor, so let's see what I can do here. Thank you all for the award. And special thanks to all of you who made this experience memorable for all of us. We had a very tough and challenging times during the pandemic. And you know, being a class rep is not an easy task, even when you have requests from you guys. We had many questions and few answers for you, and we worked as a team as, as the reps, and we dealt with a lot of uncertainty in a duty we never imagined when we signed for this, <laughs> this job. So yeah, as well, you know, we were known as, uh, not as the class reps, but the extension teams. We always were asking for extensions, even on Zoom calls, which is like crazy because uh, you don't have to attend classes. But yeah, I think no, no reps ever, <laughs> no reps ever ask for more extensions than we did in, in life. Believe me, believe me, this is even extension of extensions. But today, almost three years uh, after we started this journey together, I, I can only look backwards and, and actually feel gratitude and satisfaction for what we did together as a team, as a group, as classmates. And as I look around this room, and this is my final message, I promise, as I look around this room and at people who either, either has achieved or are on the way of achieving remarkable level of success, the recommendation and one advice from the extension guy would be don't wait too much for milestones in your life to really make an impact. Don't wait too much to give back or to change. <laughs> even small, tiny steps also lead to success. So not every day we have the chance to change, to change big issues or make a big impact, but every day offers us a new opportunity to affect someone's life. So remember, life has no extensions. Thank you, graduates, and congratulations. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the recipient of the EMBA Global Asia Class of 2020 Commitment to Excellence Award, Professor Sheena Ingongar. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations to you. I want to echo what Costis Maglara said. You are not ordinary students, and you are not students during ordinary times. Um, I still remember the time when we spent together at the beginning of your time here at the Columbia Business School. I remember our parties in London. I remember how we landed in Hong Kong and in the midst of having all this fun, the demonstrations began. And we all kind of chatted about well, what would all these demonstrations mean and where was it all going to go? And little did we know that in fact, the disruptions happening around our globe were gonna go far beyond the mere demonstrations that were happening in Hong Kong. You guys have been an inspiration throughout all this time. I love the way you thrived. I love the way you continued to pursue your dreams. I love the way you kept trying to help each other out. Because let's face it, during the last two years, it's often been not just a tumultuous time when there was lots of disruption, no matter where you go in the world, but it was a time when it was really tough to get information. And it was really tough to figure out how to handle the different challenges confronting us as individuals and as collectives. And I love the way that you would reach out to each other, you kept in contact, you kept not just helping each other, but doing the really critical thing of sharing information. I myself benefited so much by being able to reach out to you guys. So you have been such an inspiration. Um, and you know, I remember on the first day when we met and I said, you know, the, the letters MBA, don't worry, I, I promise you'll, you'll, you'll get those. And, and I was right about that. Um, but I also said, 
that you came here not just to get those letters, you came here to make a change. And that change began two years ago. Now, little did I know that, in fact, that change was going to happen in a really expedited way. Because you really are the global leaders. You're the ones who know what's going on in three different continents. You're the ones who have observed and experienced and are more aware than most of us of what kinds of disruptions and challenges are confronting us today. And I can't think of a more inspirational group of people to put my faith in to say, you're going to help us create a better world and a better future. So congratulations to all of you. And thank you for being a part of our Columbia Business School family. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to welcome to the stage one of our very own members of the class, Vivani Srivastava. Thank you, Sheena, what an honor. And good early morning, fellow graduates, family, friends, dean, faculty, and staff. It's a special day to be back with my cohort, Global Asia, class of 2020. As a group, we always talked about the legacy we want to create, the next generation, and shared a sentiment of looking out for one another. We had these very conversations in multiple languages and across several, several time zones. We even learned firsthand about the history of Lithuanian vases, the start of recycling in Kazakhstan, and tried the best hot pot in Hong Kong. Since my class has technically graduated now a couple years ago, I was at a recent alumni event and I met an investor who was investing in the space economy. I told her I was still figuring out the Earth economy, <laughs> but it is this characteristic of forward thinking and curiosity that we, Global Asia, exemplify. We are operating across industry, across the supply chain, and at the forefront of ESG investing. I could not be more proud of the evolution since the start of the masters. We noticed the difference in ourselves, in our conversations with others, and our overall potential. We have moved continents, started new companies, and secured executive positions. This, guys, is just the beginning. We know that the milestones we are reaching are possible because of the support of our family, friends, dean, faculty, staff at CBS. So thank you for supporting us, and thank you for being here today to celebrate with us. I know we can all think of someone that has championed this learning, this learning journey, and for me, it's my brother, also a CBS alum. Finally, I would like to congratulate my special class of our accomplishments, urge us to stay curious, know our values, and build a vision for the future behind, or build a vision for a future beyond our wildest dreams. I hope to see all of you graduates flourishing in the earth and space economy. Thank you. It is my pleasure to present the EMBA Global Asia Class of 2020 Distinguished Service Award to my classmates Cameron Chan and Oliver Cratchit. Thank you. Thank you, Duani. And uh, as Duani mentioned, uh, Cameron Chan unfortunately can't be here with us. Um, so we managed to organize the next best thing, and he'll be here in spirit with us today. <laughs> so 
Uh, for those that know Cameron, um, I'll try to channel uh, my inner Cameron as best as I can, which won't be an easy feat. But uh, firstly, let me just say that we're both very honored to have been uh, nominated uh, for this award, so uh, thank you. Um, flying over here from Australia, I had plenty of time to reflect on the intensive uh, two years um, that the program represented. And so just a few of those reflections. I guess the first one is uh, the number of all-nighters and caffeine uh, volume has decreased dramatically in my life. Um, that's even after becoming uh, a new parent. Um, so there's no more staying up to deal with a, a work emergency um, or deal with a class assignment um, and then go to class all night or all day. Um, so a big change. However, on a, on a more serious note, it really has to be said that it was the people, um, the faculty, support staff, students, um, that made the experience, the, uh, um, you know, the rich learning experience that it really was. So when you throw together a, a group of diverse students um, from around the world and who are willing to really um, share you know, their experiences, you end up with some amazing, uh, eye-opening discussions and learning opportunities. So I know my two minutes are running out, um, and before I wrap up, Cameron also asked me to impart a couple of uh, things. So the first thing is, working hard is what successful people do, and we obviously have a lot of success um, in the audience here today. The question is, what will you do with all you have achieved and what you will achieve? So our challenge to you is not just to aspire to make a living, but that you aspire to make a difference in this world that we live in. So we look forward to following your many successes and truly cannot wait, and these are Cameron's words, to pop magnums and buff fashion wise. Uh, congratulations to the Global Asia Class of 2020 and uh, all the fellow graduates. Thank you again. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce the recipient of the EMBA Global Asia Class of 2021 Commitment to Excellence Award, Professor John Longo. Thank you. Thanks very much to the EMBA Global Class of 2021 for this great honor. Being your professor was award enough for me, so winning this honor is very humbling and very appreciative, especially given my very talented colleagues who are part of the program. In my two minutes, I'm going to leave everyone with two thoughts, one on the Olympics and the other on the Beatles. First on the Olympics. When I was first approached about teaching the capital markets class about seven years ago, I respectfully declined, saying I was too busy. I'm a professor, chief investment officer, member of the board of directors of a public company. But then they sent me the background of the people in our program. I was blown away at the incredible talent and global nature of the people in our program. It reminded me of the Olympics. Talented people from around the world competing at the highest level in education. So congratulations on graduating with gold medals from what I consider to be the Olympics of business. Now on to the Beatles. Over the winter break, I watched the new Beatles documentary, Get Back With My Family. If you didn't see it, the Beatles had only three weeks to create a brand new album which turned out to be Let It Be, and to deliver a concert, their first in years. And of course, they hit a home run on both occasions. What we realized from watching the program is that something brilliant can be created from nothing when talented people are working together for a single cause. And to me, that's what Columbia's EMBA programs are all about. Talented people, students, faculty, administrators, working together to produce greatness. Thank you again for this great honor. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by EMBA Global Asia Class of 2021 to be today's speaker and to receive the Executive MBA Distinguished Service Award, Duncan Wilson. Well, congratulations all, we made it. 
On behalf of the Global Asia class of 2021, I'd like to thank the faculty and staff across all three schools, Columbia University, sure, but also London Business School and Hong Kong University. Through the Executive MBA program, we deepened our global perspective, our understanding of Western and Eastern businesses, organizations, and cultures. We grew alongside and continue to be aided by an extraordinarily accomplished and diverse cohort. That's all of you here today and watching Connected Virtually. Representing some two dozen nationalities and a range of industries, our cohort embodied and enabled an enriching global perspective. Your insights, advice, and generosity helped us all see nuance and opportunities among profound global and business shifts and in our professional lives. In Hong Kong, we were impacted by the historic protests, the subject of intense yet respectful debate among classmates from the region. In London, we witnessed the UK's exit from the European Union. And in New York, we navigated the steepest Dow drop in history, exchanging stock tips and investment strategies, while steely-eyed Professor Longo offered his wise counsel. And then we faced COVID. It put an end to our monthly overseas trips and did what, and did what really no professor could do, which was force us to the computer screen. But despite the distance, our connections continued to grow. I asked classmates to share with me stories of their highs from the program. I received so many, but actually many of them aren't really the kind I can relate to you today. After all, we asked our loved ones for $100,000 to spend on education, right? Not an international bar tab. In truth, though, we did both, forging friendships in the classroom that flourished outside of it. Friends highlighted cracking course cases in KTV karaoke bars, hammering out problem sets while hiking in Hong Kong and at clubs in Korea, strategizing over soju and on ski trips, and great times in London and New York, including with our friends from the Americas and Europe program. There were stories of startups, businesses created and expanded, and professional triumphs celebrated. Other classmates highlighted uh, several executive MBA babies. Exact number unknown. Anyway, it's time to fess up. Antonio, Brandon, McLean. Anyway, for a bunch of graduates who supposedly passed quant, there was a lot of ambiguity there. But one story, however, stands out. You remember, three years ago, almost to this very day, we all met for the first time in London for orientation week. There was one session when we were confronted with musical instruments we'd never played and some had never even seen. Picking up the violin, double bass, someone lucked out and got the drums, we were tasked with collectively playing an orchestral opening. After some initially painful practice, then coaching, collaboration, we coaxed a recognizable riff, and then different musical sections complementing the other finally struck out that orchestral opening, creating something close to a symphony from our disparate tools and talents. Learning together and supporting one another from that day forward through the Executive MBA program and beyond, we deepened our global perspectives, our understanding of Western and Eastern businesses, organizations, and cultures, and perhaps most importantly, our sense of what is possible. And we continue to grow and be aided by an extraordinarily accomplished and diverse cohort of classmates, friends, leaders, and now graduates. Congratulations to you all and to the Global Asia class of 2021. It's now my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by the Executive MBA New York Americas class of 2019 to be today's speaker and to receive the Executive MBA Distinguished Service Award, uh, Jackie Kopcho. Good afternoon, I guess morning. The America's 2019, it's like that, uh, those 40-year-olds that go back for Thanksgiving Eve to like relive the fantasy. 
um, and it's amazing, so I get it now. Uh, I have the honor of representing the EMBA Americas class of 2019. Each of my classmates was accepted into this program because of what they did and who they were, but they will be remembered for what they do. Since graduating, our classmates have done things like develop a spider silk helmet. They founded uh, impact investing funds and fintech funds. They launched products that help prevent methane leaks and oil spills, created scientific methods to evaluate cannabis products, joined some of the most innovative companies in the world, and have built self-storage empires. While doing all of this, there have been some mergers and acquisitions, marriages and babies, and the most recent baby, Ike, last night, right? Congratulations, man. And to my classmates, mi gente, mis hermanos y hermanas, the time that we had together is an intangible benefit to who we are, and better yet, who we will be. So don't define yourself by your past work, but go on to develop a legacy born from this experience. And I think we could all agree there is one woman that has been a huge part of this journey. And on behalf of the EMBA Americas class of 2019 and the EMBA Americas class of 2020, it is my pleasure to present the Commitment to Excellence Award to Professor Wei Zhang. Everybody, I'm so happy for all of you on this big day. I always remember every detail of us navigating the corporate finance course together through a full semester. As I told you, I utterly admire your ability to juggle so many things, study, job, family, and all the other requirements in life. You made it. I want to let you know that I always enjoy hearing from you. I learned that some of you have expansions in the family, some of you launched a new career, and nothing beats some of you telling me that you've made big bucks following the knowledge and advice from the course I taught. You constantly remind me that I should follow my own advice more often. Anyway, hearing from you makes me happy, makes me laugh. I wish you best of luck in the next chapter of your lives and hope to continue to hear from you. Congratulations. And it's now my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by the EMBA Americas class of 2020 to speak today, Jesse Greer. Hey, good morning, Columbia. And a special good morning to the EMBA's class of 2020. Where are you guys? Oh, uh, way in the back there. All right, good, good, good. And to everybody else in a cap and gown, congrats on all the graduating. And uh, everybody else, you guys look really good for, for how early it is, you know. Uh, it's so good to see so many motivated and inspired people in one place. Uh, this was my favorite part about being in the military uh, was all the uh, occasional gatherings of uh, motivated folks. The only problem was usually the location, you know, but I'm very excited to speak on behalf of uh, EMBA Americas, class of 2020, and if you'll bear with me, I'd like to brag about them for just a little bit. So, uh, since the first day of class on January 7th, 2019, companies founded by members of our class now generate uh, more than $100 million in annual revenue and employ over 500 people. Uh, a lot, of, yeah, well, it gets, it gets better. The, uh, the, a, a lot of the folks actually went back to their, uh, a lot of the graduates went back to their family businesses and um, they're generating revenues uh, well over a billion dollars. We have had 13 babies, which is pretty considering, or, or, which is pretty uh, huge considering there's only 40 people in the class. <laughs> Very busy. Uh, we've had... Uh, <laughs> We've also had two marriages, one engagement, and zero membership offers to the Illuminati. <laughs> wink, it says to wink here. <laughs> uh, we've got folks with cool nicknames like Jet Set, Thick Nick, Young Rob the God, and El Presidente. In fact, El Presidente 
Teo, Te, uh, Teo Zubalaga was featured in Forbes where he shared the secret to success. So you might want to write this down. He said, La clave tiene que ver con tres aspectos fundamentales. La re resiliencia, la tenacidad, y la agilidad. Well, that sounds right to me, El Presidente. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw your resilience it took to finish the degrees after the world was knocked off its axis, and I saw the tenacity in the monthly soccer games, usually followed by a week of soreness. And I saw the agility it took for everybody to fly all over the world to hang out in different locations like Toronto, Lima, Santiago, Cartagena, Mexico City, to really create the, uh, the Emba family. And since it's been two years since our graduation, uh, I'd like to offer some anecdotal affirmations of the quality of the Columbia Business School education. A little bit of uh, non-traditional advice that I remember best from here. This is for the entrepreneurs. Uh, but your product and your idea stink. I mean, they have promise, but let's not confuse the situation. They still stink. And, and uh, actually, you're probably wrong in a hundred ways that you don't even know, uh, that you can't even imagine. But that's okay. New ideas are supposed to stink, and we need to get used to hearing that. But the good news is we can make them better. We just have to get out there and talk to people, talk to a lot of people, anybody who will listen. In fact, a professor here at Columbia once told me, you're not trying hard enough unless you've been kicked out of a few buildings trying to talk to people. The people will tell you what's wrong, and then we learn and we iterate. And if you do a whole bunch of other stuff right, we just might have a chance. So to all the amazing professors here today, like Sheena Iyengar and Daniel Guetta and Madini Singh, um, thank you. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your professionalism while teaching us these lessons. We're ready to go forward with open hearts, open mind, and open ears so that we can hear what the world has to say. And then we're going to take that data and we're going to mine it for strategic insights. And we're going to figure out what to sell it back to them. <laughs> Go business. <laughs> so on behalf of the EMBA America's Class of 2020, it's my pleasure to present the EMBA Distinguished Service Award to Kelly Rodigas. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, distinguished faculty, friends, family, and especially to my peers for honoring me with this award. In January 2019, as if any of us needed another full-time responsibility, we all decided to get our MBAs. We juggled classes, family, friends, we became parents, we began and ended relationships, we changed jobs, we survived a pandemic, and through it all, we showed up to class every month, every weekend, over Zoom, we traveled the world together and achieved enormous professional success. All while staying up until 3 a.m. on the infamous Viceroy rooftop. I don't know how we did it, but I couldn't have asked for a better group of, of people to do it with. I say this often, I came into CBS thinking I'd surely make some friends, but instead I look out into this crowd all the way in the back <laughs> where my class is, um, and I see my family. Thank you for this honor and congratulations to everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by the EMBA America's Class of 2021 to speak today, Ida Posner. It's often said that you go to business school for the people. I couldn't agree more. And I could not be more proud to say that the members of the EMBA America's Class of 2021 are my people. Thank you for giving me the honor of speaking today. You know, in hindsight, January of 2020 was an interesting time to start an executive MBA focused entirely on travel. Our experience was not what we expected and often not what we wanted, but it was unique and it was ours. It mirrored the reality of the increasingly complex and challenging world we live in, one where change is the new constant. We were the last of the Americas, the last to finish our degrees on this campus, and the first to never get our values cards. 
Turns out we didn't need them because I experienced my classmates living their values every day, boldly and authentically. We're a group diverse in backgrounds and perspectives, yet we quickly became a family, fiercely loyal and supportive, not afraid to say what we really think. We traded in the big moments, the international trips, the parties, the campus itself for the smaller ones, sidewalk dinners in freezing temperatures and dystopian adventures at the Marriott Marquis. <laughs> We're all graduating highly proficient in Zoom, a happy consequence of which is the genuine joy of seeing each other in real life, even when it's 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Today is a day to celebrate our collective success and an important moment to pause and appreciate the people who got us here. To the administrative and facilities staff whose work behind the scenes allowed all of this to happen, thank you. To our family, friends, and colleagues who have supported us on every step of this borderline chaotic journey, thank you. And to our faculty and professors who motivated us and kept us moving during a time when the rest of the world stopped who shifted my mindset from did you get it right to did you learn something, and who brought their love of teaching into the classroom every day. Thank you. To a degree, our interrupted experience means we're left wanting more. I think that's a good thing. I hope we can lean into that feeling and let it keep us in each other's orbits. I'm standing here today among the most remarkable, intelligent, and driven people I know. And the best part is, this is just the start. To spend two years getting to know you, learn from you, and see what you have already accomplished gives me real optimism and excitement for the future. Let's continue to seek out difficult and satisfying work, and remember what our experience at Columbia has taught us, that when faced with uncertainty and unexpected challenges, we still find a way to thrive. Thank you. And now, on behalf of the EMBA Americas Class of 2021, it is my honor to present the EMBA Distinguished Service Award to my dear friend, Pramod Panamaneni. Thank you, Ida. Thank all of you for choosing me for this wonderful honor. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, all the families that put up with us. Thank you, Nithya. This is... This, um, I guess this award represents a lot of Tito's and sodas and late nights, and so, but I want to share it with all of you. Um, thank you for making the effort to becoming great friends over this whole time, so thank you very much. I've never been with a group of people that care so much about who you are, your growth, and your success, so thank you very much. Thank you to CBS for the wonderful experience, and I know school has ended, but the fun just now begins. Um, it is on my honor to introduce on behalf of, um, of America's 21 and Friday, Saturday 21 for our Commitment to Excellence Award to Professor Daniel Guetta. Good morning, everyone. I have had the honor to teach so many of you in this room, and it is such a joy to be here with you at the culmination of your CBS journey. So many congratulations. Please don't be strangers. I expect to hear extraordinary things from all of you in the coming years. I want to specifically congratulate the two classes that have done me the immense honor of bestowing this award upon me. I'm so deeply touched by your choice, and I thank you really from the, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, let me say a few words first to the Ember Americas class of 2021. Um, you were the very first cluster I taught fully on Zoom, uh, an experience which I'm sure you're as eager to forget as using the old BA add-in on a Mac computer. So we won't, uh, we won't remind ourselves about that. I think it says something, though, that I had to double check in preparation for today that we did indeed only meet on Zoom. The amount of life and enthusiasm that you brought to our time together, even across the screen, just speaks such volumes to you and your enthusiasm and your personalities. You were a true delight, and I can't imagine any hurdles getting in your way. And now the Ember Friday Saturday class of 2021. You're a truly extraordinary group of people. And I'm not just talking about the fact you all forced me into my first ever karaoke performance in residence week. I'm not even talking about the endurance of your livers. 
Nor am I even talking about the fact you're apparently still taking every second Friday off until your employers realize you've actually graduated. <laughs> I'm talking about the heart in your group and the way you've grown in friendship and community since you all started. One of the most meaningful moments I've had at CBS has been delivering the CBS matches you invited me to give. Hearing your stories and telling you mine is something I'll remember for a long time to come. I hope you keep those friendships and this community going far into the future and that I get to be part of it. Talking of that CBS Matters, I don't know if you remember, but the speaker before me at the time joked that he was my opener for the night. How fitting it is, therefore, that he is the person you, the Ember New York Friday Saturday class of 2021, chose to speak today. And that today I am his opener. My dear friends, I give you the inimitable John Bolton. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to represent clusters A and B from the class of 2021. I'm truly blessed to have gone through this program with some of the most outstanding men and women I've ever met in my life. And so when thinking about what to say today, uh, a few things came to mind. Uh, but there's one quote, I think, from Professor Craven's Leadership Through Fiction class uh, that I think applies to a day like today. The saying is from author Joseph Campbell, and it goes like this. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. To which Professor Craven added in bold letters on the slide, enter the cave. In one way, today is meant to commend us all for entering the cave of Columbia. I know for many of us here, this end of journey was a tremendous challenge filled with obstacles and adversity that we all had to overcome. None of us could have foreseen the situations we dealt with over the last two years, but the fact that we all still entered this cave together should be a cause for celebration itself. But in another way, today is about celebrating the treasure that we found here. For some of us, the treasure of Columbia has led to a promotion, a new career path, and even a new startup. For others, that treasure has been access to lifelong learning, world-class professors, and a renewed passion for academic excellence. But for me, the treasure I found after entering this cave was all of you. I could not have dreamt of a more rewarding Emma experience, and I'll be forever grateful for my time here with each and every one of you. Thank you for helping me find one of the greatest treasures of my life. I hope that going forward, we will all still enter the cave, no matter what life throws our way, and continue to find lifelong treasures like the ones that we found here. One special treasure that so many of us were lucky to find at Columbia was Teddy Van Buren. And as we're gathered here today in celebration, I want to take a moment to pause and remember a man who was a shining light in our class. My words will never truly capture the impact Teddy had on us, this school, this community, and this world. So here are his words as he spoke from his heart to classmates and friends, sharing his aspirations for all of us. Man, since the beginning, when they made fire, have been gathering around the fire. And they've been doing it for a lot of reasons. And I think we can go around tonight. I would love to go around tonight at the dinner table and share why we gather around the fire. But I'll tell you why I am. I'm gathering on the fire because I get to hang out with my best people. I get to hang out with my brothers. I get to actually emote. I get to share stories. I get to tell about the past, but I get to dream about the future. And the future is what I'm excited to talk about today and tonight. Like literally, we're gonna stare at this fire as brothers. Ooh. Are you okay? I'm good. Oh, we're gonna make this sure it's necessary. In terms <laughs> of no, 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 I think you're good. We're gonna make well, sure that one of good. our brothers <laughs> takes the risk. I've gotta get going. I think you're good. <laughs> but we're gonna get to like put this in words into the universe for all of us to hear. And Thank guess you. what that does? That puts it into the social consciousness really where yeah, we can all make that a reality for each other. So you stare at the fire. You look at each other, you share, and all of a sudden, that becomes part of your social fabric of who you are. I'm like, yes, I want to make Frank's reality a reality. I want to make June's reality a reality. I want to make Wooter's reality a reality. I want to make Manny's. I want to make Greg's. I want to make Andrew's. And we're going to do that tonight. 
And that's what this fire pit's about. That's what staring at fire is about. That's what brotherhood's about. And I'm so pumped that we're kicking it off tonight with all y'all. This is just so beautiful to me to end the Columbia experience. Cheers, Cheers to that. Cheers, cheers. Titty Thank you to my classmates for sharing that video with us. Please join me in a moment of silence to remember Teddy. Teddy. We love you and we miss you dearly. May we all follow your advice and do everything we can to make our classmates' dreams a reality. We know that as we walk on the stage and gather again on this campus, that you love so much that you are right here with us. And now, on behalf of the EMBA New York Friday Saturday Class of 2021, it's my pleasure to present the EMBA Distinguished Service Award to my good friend, Alex Higby. Thanks, John. Teddy, we are thinking of you always, and especially today. I am honored and humbled to accept this award, and a big thank you to Chris Waterman, who was my partner in crime during the program. This service award represents the most impactful moments of my time at Columbia. These experiences weren't exactly spent learning in the classroom. Apologies to the educators. Um, instead, I gained the most from the stories of daring and resilience shared by this group of scholar degenerates all the way in the back. Awesome. Professor Geta said it best, but during a time when it was incredibly challenging to make connections, this incredible group of people found a way to build lifelong friendships and a community that is very much still alive. Graduates, families, and friends, what a long, strange trip it's been. Congratulations to everyone for coming together at this moment. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by the EMBA Saturday class of 2021, Kim Pad. Thank you, Alex. Wow, we made it here. I remember that I used to count down the days until this graduation would actually happen. I've always had a really strong internal countdown clock. I remember it started when I was 13 and I was in middle school and I could not wait until I could get into high school. Then I got to high school and I started counting down, counting down the years until I could apply to college. Even in business school, a program I chose to join and that I so deeply love. I was counting down the days until graduation. Now, we had nine hours every single Saturday on Zoom for a year. So I know you all know the feeling of one more term, one more class, one more week. But unfortunately, in early 2020, as many of you know and so wonderfully supported me through, I was diagnosed with metastatic stage four breast cancer that has no cure at this point in time. And I was put on medicine that would have a median disease-free progression of 24 months. 24 months. I couldn't stop myself from counting down. I would count down every pill, every month, until my medicine could possibly stop working. I was counting down to devastating consequences. And unfortunately, as we just saw, and as I know too well, we do not have enough time on this planet to constantly count down for the next best thing. We don't. We cannot constantly sacrifice today for a better tomorrow or something shinier in the future. So I wrote this speech a year ago. And I decided to truly implement the words that I'm going to share with you. And they've truly changed my life. I decided to start counting up. What is counting up? Counting up is being grateful for every single day as it is. For being engaged and present, being with your loved ones, your friends, your peers, your colleagues, and being there in that moment. 
I have counted up 28 months on chemotherapy. I have counted up nine months of a surrogacy journey to build my family. I've counted up three months of my daughter's life. So I ask you to remember today to count up your life. Count up every minute. Count up every day. Create a beautiful, meaningful, and enriching life. So congratulations to all those who are graduating today. Thank you to all of those who helped us get here. And um, good luck. On behalf of <laughs> Kate. Thank you. So, on behalf of the EMBA New York Saturday class of 2021, and honestly, probably every single student here, it's my pleasure to present the EMBA Distinguished Service Award to Philip Zhao. So I know some, there's some confusion about which class year I am, so I'm proud to announce and uh, Huge shout out to Saturday 21, right in the middle over there. <laughs> uh, so thank you, thank you, Kim, and what an honor this is. I wanted to thank my mom, dad, sister, Mochi, our, our family dog, she's an Akita, um, and also those who, who couldn't be with us today. Uh, thank you to my fellow classmates and loved ones uh, for being so inspirational and worth every minute of the past three years. Thank you to Columbia, our generous professors and thoughtful administration team who curate a very special group of individuals uh, to come together. I'm forever grateful for and proud of our CBS community. And so, you know, I, I forgot what I did to deserve this service award. Uh, and then over the past few weeks, I received several calls about how to RSVP for today's graduation. So that's when I remembered. <laughs> uh, so I leave you with this quote. Uh, from Sir Winston Churchill. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Thank you. Um, speaking of giving, on behalf of the EMBA New York Saturday Class of 21, it is my pleasure to present the Commitment to Excellence Award to Professor Cyrus Mohebi. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here to participate in your graduation ceremony. I would like to thank you to a student body for selecting me to receive this award, especially in the statistics. Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, I, could, I could not excel as a teacher here without the support I receive from the program's faculty and the staff. It does, as they say, takes a village. I want to congratulate and applaud each of you for your commitment to reaching higher for the, for the education needed to pursue your passions to lead the life that you want to live. I'm sure you have worked hard to get to this day, a day where your family and friends, as well as your professor, and indeed all of the deans and faculty here share with great pride in your collective accomplishment and tremendous promise of your future. You would not have completed this journey without sacrifices. Please take a moment and think about those people who help you along the way and say thank you to them. My heartiest congratulation to you, to you all. Much success in your career and may the education you receive here at Columbia serve as a pillar you can uh, always lean on. I would like to introduce, my pleasure to introduce Rupali Thirmal. Wow. <laughs> Saturday class of uh, 2020 Cluster e &M, we finally made it. Uh, <laughs> I thought, you know, after a six minute tribute to CBS Matters uh, at our virtual graduation two years ago, uh, I'd, I'd wanna keep this short and simple. Uh, no grand life-changing advice, 
Um, but you know, if you're looking for it, I'll be at Baylander today around one o'clock. Thank you, Allison, for setting that up. Uh, who's done a tremendous job keeping us together post-graduation. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about today was happiness. Our class spent almost the entire program together and it felt like it was overnight where we went from spending Saturday mornings getting our hard-boiled egg, our bagels, scallion cream cheese, double toasted, strolling into class, sneaking out of class to go to arts and crafts, coming back into class feeling really nice, and then closing the night with pizza, beer, and CBS Matters, to then adapting to living our lives socially, virtually. You know, for a long time, I thought the ideal life was checking off everything off my bucket list, right? Uh, because that's what made me happy, check everything off, check everything off. Um, and now I just get happy every time my COVID test comes back negative. And I'm, and I'm sure uh, JP can attest to that as well. Uh, so, you know, the ideal life is so subjective, right? We recalibrated what this means to us. And I know that for many of you, we, redis we rediscovered what it means to be happy again, right? I loved playing The Legend of Zelda growing up and taking the main character Link through his main quest to defeat Ganon and to save Princess Zelda for the 57th freaking time. Uh, you know, and it was really hard and frustrating, but when you beat the main quest, you're waiting for the cool ending and then the cool ending happens, and then you're sad that it's over. You know, there's a real sense of withdrawal, but then you remember the side quests, you know? Those side quests are so fun. There's hundreds of them, hundreds of them, enough to make you happy for a really long time. So, you know, you probably don't need to be on the happiness treadmill all the time, you know, where you're constantly running in the pursuit of happiness, uh, you'll have your main quests and you'll have your side quests. And it's okay to get off the treadmill once in a while. You know, you don't have to pressure yourself to exercise every day. So congratulations to all of you today for, gradu for graduating uh, for what you may call has been a main quest for you or a side quest for you. And you guys have done a remarkable job and it is an honor here today to, rep to represent my class. So without further ado, on behalf of the EMBA New York Saturday class of 2020, it is my pleasure to present the Commitment to Excellent Award to Professor Omar Besves. Thanks. Thank you, Rupali, and what a pleasure to be with you, with all of you here today to celebrate together this important milestone. Class of 2020, better late than never, right? It took us three, almost more than two years, but we were able to make it happen and I wouldn't miss it for anything. I mean, first I would like to congratulate everyone here present. I mean, you have achieved something quite impressive and it is no small feat that you've been able to navigate through an executive MBA in the past two or three years. Right, I would like also to particularly thank the class of 2020 for this award, right? Uh, I must say it means a tremendous amount to me. I mean, there's a saying in my household where my wife and kids, whenever we enter the teaching mode, they say that we enter into a new regime. Essentially, daddy, we cannot plan anything around what daddy does. And the truth is that I often wonder why, and the truth is that I realize that commitment is actually contagious. The energy that I have, I draw it from you. I draw it from your commitment to navigate a career together with an education and being prepared most of the time, not every time, for the cases we're going to discuss. Right? I must say that I view teaching as a privilege at Columbia Business School. You get to interact with some of the most extraordinary individuals, you the students, my colleague, the faculty, and the staff that support you. We get to meet the most diverse set of stu students across any career that we could have. And, um, and more broadly, we join a very special community. This is a community that I turned to during the past three years and the hard times during the pandemic. I also had the privilege of being a product of a CBS education myself, like all of you. 
right? And I must say this was a life-changing experience for me and I have no doubt that it is also for you already or it will be very soon, right? Whether you graduated two years ago or just today, right? This is really a day of reflection. As you're thinking about the next phases in your career, I encourage you to approach them with two things, humility and curiosity. Don't be content, be curious, and be a lifelong learner. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to wish all of you the very best in the next phases of your career. I know that your current or future successes will continue to inspire us, but also to inspire the next generation of students. So congratulations again to everyone. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen by the EMBA New York Saturday class of 2022 to speak today, Lauren Silva. Thank you to my amazing class for inviting me to this stage. It's truly an honor. They told me I have to keep my speech to a page. And for your sake, I just hope it's not a yawner. At first, I was nervous that maybe I'd say something and later regret it, but then figured you'd hear over 30 speeches today. So even if I did, you'd probably forget it. I know it's early, so bear with me here while I attempt a simple rhyme and maybe a joke. I just want to give you all a unique spoken word speech that's both on time and bespoke. So in these brief moments where I at least have some of your attention, there's a few items of note I would be remiss not to mention. In preparing the speech, the thought entered my mind that wherever life leads, one can always begin anew. Might not sound like a lot, but now maybe you'll find that this thought's entered your mind too. As some of you know, I've worked for over a decade as a visual artist. And from what I can say when it comes to change, I know the hardest part is just getting started. And though this is a cliche, I also know that home is where the heart is. And you've all been my heart and my home these past two years. And through some pretty tough luck, we've miraculously persevered through our fears. I remember starting my admission essay, just a blank sheet for a view, trying to picture what I would say and what it would be like to meet all of you. It hasn't been an easy run, and I'm sure there's been times we each wanted to hide with our cameras off on Zoom. But we've also had our fun, and on the bright side, I finally got that corner office. Yeah, it's in my living room. <laughs> These schools made me rearrange my house a lot. Not only did I get a new desk and bookshelf, but also a new mirror to hold up and look as I ask myself, what's in a fulfilling life? What's in a full career? If perchance you're, you are feeling a bit stuck today, I don't have any great finding, and I'm not here to give you a special key during this talk and for you to put your hope in it. Just wanted to say, in case you need reminding, that you are all already free. The door has no lock, so just open it. We have each taken strides to make our most ambitious dreams our reality. And like many of life's repeating themes, in our stride we balance a duality. With each step we cast, a long shadow on the ground, behind us robed in experience from our past, while we walk forward towards the horizon ahead, our heads crowned with light, so full, bright, and vast. We've put a lot of our lives aside, but after the events of the day commence, weekends are ours again to reclaim, and I hope the sense of pride you feel today is immense when you stand up and they say your name. This will all be over soon, and we can get to our champagne toast and our powder blue dress and spend the afternoon making Instagram posts, hashtagging YCBS. And remember, your next chapter is yours to write, whether it's writ soft and fleeting in the sand, or you want to write to commit, chisel it in stone by hand. Whatever your method, whatever your pen, I wish you all the best of luck as you each start your next story after today and begin again. Thank you.
On behalf of the EMBA New York Saturday class of 2022, it is my pleasure to present the EMBA Distinguished Service Award to my dear friend, the one and only Mahir Karani. Thank you, Lauren, for that warm introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. It is my honor to receive the Distinguished Service Award as chosen by my amazing classmates from the class of 2022 Clusters E&M. On behalf of my class, I'd like to thank Dean Magalares and the rest of the CBS administration who worked tirelessly over the last two years to make the most of a program given an unprecedented situation. It's been an incredible journey since May 2020, from being fully remote for term one, being the only people in Times Square for Residence Weekend, listening to over 40 CBS Matters presentations, being the first class on the Manhattanville campus, open container violations, joining organizations like BIB, and going on some classic road shows. We've all laughed, cried, and grown together. And I wouldn't have chosen a different group of people to go on this journey with. <clears throat> it's been an honor to get to know each, and one of, each one of you incredibly talented and driven individuals. And I look forward to hearing what all of you will do both professionally and personally in the future. So thank you and congratulations to everyone in the class of 2022, as well as the class of 2020 and 2021. And now it is my pleasure to introduce, us, uh, introduce you to the man who taught us all about Italian rainbow cookies, I mean value investing, the co-recipient of the EMBA New York Saturday Class of 2022 Commitment to Excellence Award and the co-recipient of the EMBA New York Friday Saturday Class of 2022 Commitment to Excellence Award, Professor Paul Johnson. Wow. I love how the dean referred to COVID as a once-in-a-century pandemic. My only thought was, I hope so. <laughs> There's 99 more years left. <laughs> it is truly an honor to be selected for this award. I was really shocked when Kelly sent me the email and incredibly flattered. I had to read it twice. Um, it means more to me than you might imagine. And from two graduating classes, thank you. You have to admit, it has been a wild few years. What COVID has taught us, or dare I say reminded us, that the future is uncertain and always will be probably something we should uh, learn to accept. You've taken many courses in accounting, strategy, management and marketing, and for some of you, value investing. You've developed new abilities, new perspectives, and new relationships, all of which are highly valuable. However, the most important lesson you have learned, while I'm tempted to say value investing, is task persistence. Obtaining this degree is a testament to your perseverance and hard work more than any other single factor. You now know what it takes to achieve your goals. That insight will take you far in life. Congratulations are in order. It is indeed an impressive accomplishment. For those of you who did take my course, you know, I can barely set up a good joke in, two, in the two minutes that they have allotted each speaker today. So instead, I will conclude my remarks with some unsolicited life advice. <laughs> Couldn't help it. All right. First, you're way more exhausted physically and mentally than you probably realize. Caffeine and adrenaline are wonderful study aids. And second, your relationships, both personal and professional, are more strained than you might recognize. Many of the people in your life have been unbelievably patient and supportive of you throughout this challenging past two years. So, here's the unsolicited life advice. Take a breath. Get some sleep. Perhaps some R&R. &R. Maybe even take a vacation without schoolwork. And in other words, 
take care of yourself. And second, nurture the relationships that are important to you. Show the people in your life how much you appreciate them and their being by your side throughout your MBA journey. In other words, take care of the important people in your life. And when you have successfully accomplished those two tasks, go back to changing the world. Congratulations, best of luck, and thank you. All right, it is my great pleasure to introduce the graduate chosen as speaker of the EMBA New York Friday, Saturday, class of 2022, Seawit Techie. All right. EMBA Friday, Saturday, class of 2022, clusters A and B. Thank you for selecting me to be your class speaker. You must have known how much I love doing extra credit. <laughs> I am Dr. Sawiteki, MD, and now MBA. You can never... <laughs> you can never have too many degrees after your name, according to my parents. <laughs> Shout out to the parents in the audience today. I would like to first thank the village that helped me get here today. My husband, Benit, my mother, Ganet, my father, Tekie, my siblings, Adam, Lilai, and Askede. And a special thank you to my two children, Robel and Zuria, for understanding that mommy's absence over the past 20 months was well worth it. So some of you may be, may be wondering, why would a medical doctor go to business school? Let me tell you my why. Medicine has always been my calling. As a child, my idea of fun was creating a life-size model of the human circulatory system. But after a decade in medical practice, my romance with medicine started to fade as I began to see the magnitude of the flaws in our healthcare system. Everywhere I looked was a non-medical problem in desperate need of fixing, problems of structure, process, society, and leadership. And I could not shake the questions that many of you may have asked yourselves. Why is it that so many people in the richest country in the world don't have access to quality health care? Why did the so-called best hospitals turn away the underinsured? And what can I do to change these entrenched systems? And that is why I came to business school. Just as medical school is where I learned the foundations to care for other people's health, business school is where I've learned the fundamentals of tackling large-scale problems. And I've learned that business has a meaningful role to play in society, from thinking about how we allocate resources wisely to how we can use entrepreneurship for social improvement. And the diversity of this community is how this learning happened. Where else can you find an Eritrean physician, a Lebanese engineer who has never missed his favorite soccer match, especially if it overlapped with class, a Venezuelan fashion executive who has mastered both Wordle and Hurdle, and a pair of American tech whizzes who might have found an issue with course match, all sitting in the same class working towards the same goal. EMBA class of 2022, it has been a thrill to be your classmate. I can't wait to see how you all shape the future of your industries, and I promise you that I am going to do my best to shape the future of mine. If there's one thing you remember from me, let it be this. There are real problems that need solving in our great country. And who better than us to go out there and actually solve them? And now, on behalf of the EMBA New York Friday Saturday Class of 2022, it is my pleasure to present the Distinguished Service Award to my friend, Maria Vijayquiran. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Suet. Thank you, classmates. I believe that doing good for others 
provides a natural sense of accomplishment, but more importantly, it creates community. For the past two years, our class has built a community of resilient leaders that have given back to each other in challenging times. As I reflect on my experience in the program, I can't help but think about all the incredible things that we have done together. Naturally, I did a highlight by the numbers as this is business school after all. Together we spent 720 hours together in over 45 different weekends. I know I couldn't believe it either. About 450 times somebody forgot to unmute themselves on Zoom. You know who you are. 50 attempts at passing that bond question on that accounting final. 36 amazing students who shared their story in, at CBS Matters. We spent 10 days at that Marriott Marquis with an unforgettable time in the overflow room. <laughs> and more importantly, we had three international trips where we learned that WAC is not just weighted average cost of capital. And we have one unbreakable bond. Cheers to my wonderful classmates. I can't wait to be your biggest cheerleader and see where all our journeys take us. It is my pleasure to introduce the co-recipient of the EMBA New York Friday Saturday Class of 2022 Commitment to Excellence Award to Professor Hidendra Watwa. It is such um, an honor, a joy, a privilege to both get the honor and uh, the opportunity to be here with all of you and my distinguished colleagues. Um, we are living in complicated times, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better soon. So how is it that we are going to make all the important decisions in our life? How are we going to make the tough choices? How are we going to forge our pathways to truth? It's just becoming more complicated. And one way in which we seek to do it is through science, and that's a beautiful thing. Facts, logic, data. Another way that we seek to do it at times is through experience, our own and the experiences of others and what we learn from it. And then a third way is at times through faith, faith in principles and ideas that we have picked up from our family and our friends and our culture, at times from the scriptures. But I would offer to you if these are the only three sources that you consult, especially at a complicated time like this, then you're missing three other very critical sources. Inner science, inner experience, and what I would call inner faith. Inner science is where you generate hypotheses, go out and run experiments, and collect data by doing so on your own self, exploring ideas on what will actually help you advance your happiness, advance your health, advance your harmony with others, and advance your high performance. So think about inner science. Inner experience is where you pay attention to the subtle inklings and stirrings that from time to time arise within you. Perhaps it is a moment at work and an executive brings up a certain idea about a new technology and you pause because there's something within you that asks, are we putting profits before purpose? Are we putting profits before people? And rather than let it go, you honor that moment and that inner experience. And ultimately, there is inner faith. And inner faith is where you take a pause, you pull back from life, you create moments of solitude, and you ask your own inner voice, what is the guidance you want to give me? And I would offer to you that you came here to school, but really what we are seeking to do at this moment is send all of us back to the school, the school of life, where the beautiful campus is the walks that you take in nature and the consultations that you do with yourself. And your network is the inner circle of friends that you seek to consort with, living or dead, that inspire and guide you. And the professors 
are these intuitions and inklings that you have from time to time. And the dean of that school is your own inner voice. Because as Gandhi once said, he said, truth abides in every human heart. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce a graduate chosen by the EMBA New York Friday Saturday class of 2020 to speak today, Sasha Schechter. Good morning. Good morning, faculty, staff, family, friends and graduates of the Columbia Business School EMBA classes of 2020, 21, and 22, congratulations to us all on making it to this hard-won milestone. But especially to my classmates in the EMBA New York Friday-Saturday class of 2020. If I'm honest, this day feels imaginary. Perhaps you also felt a little awkward getting ready this morning. But now that we're here, I think we can agree that today is so very welcome and even more special than we could have imagined two years ago. When we started our EMBA journey, the world looked different than it does today. Professor Harris assured us that PPE stood for property, plant, and equipment, and social distancing more accurately described the physical gaps between clusters B and A at the beginning of term one, as we all began to create what are now invaluable friendships. Today's graduation feels like two rites of passage converging, the official conclusion of our time as Columbia students and the beginning of a new chapter in a still evolving global pandemic. As such, I wanted to share some lessons learned from navigating both. First, be intentional with your time. In EMBA, this often meant finding exactly eight and a half minutes between every meeting and family obligation to work on the perfect value stick for a strategy exam. In our COVID reality, it means trusting our teams at work to put focus where it matters most in the moment, and seeing that work-life integration may have always been a better goal than balance. Over the past two years, and even this morning, we've learned many times over that time is finite and precious. May we all prioritize accordingly. Second, leverage your team. Would I have learned statistics without having a data scientist or two on speed dial? Well, yes, but it wouldn't have been as fun. Would we have been able to gather here today without a joint commitment to each other's well-being? Certainly not. So perhaps you can go it alone, but you will be made better by connecting with others their perspectives, their priorities, listen, learn, collaborate, and then make better decisions. Finally, create value. EMBA taught us that true value in business comes as equally from scale and customer captivity as it does from our own humanity as decision makers. And in COVID, we continue to see that the value of our businesses in times of great uncertainty, as well as the value of human life, lies most fundamentally in our shared humanity. May we remember this and carry it forward as leaders. Today, my heart is full looking out at all this Columbia blue. I take such pride in knowing that as we continue to navigate a time of disruption and change, the Columbia Business School EMBA New York Friday Saturday class of 2020 has produced compassionate, smart, creative, driven leaders ready to tackle and reinvent what's next. I'm humbled to be one of them speaking to you on their behalf. And so once again, cheers to all the graduates and to all the family and friends that supported us. Without you, we certainly would not be here today. At long last, let's walk across this stage and celebrate. We did it. And now, on behalf of the EMBA New York Friday, Saturday class of 2020, it is my pleasure to present the EMBA Distinguished Service Award to Sarah Davidson. Final student speaker, guys. We made it. Getting close to the end. Whew. So it is the honor of my lifetime to be receiving this award. 
on behalf of one of the most incredible group of people I've ever had the privilege to be uh, around for so much time. Uh, this award uh, includes a recognition around spirit and achievement, and my beloved Friday, Saturday, AMBA 2020 peers have demonstrated more achievement and more spirit than any other group I've ever met. Uh, you know, that is, I think, exemplified in many ways. Uh, one is an ability to be out thriving on the streets of New York until, you know, four o'clock in the morning and then in the classroom crushing it at 8 a.m., somehow getting a run in in between. It's a pretty impressive achievement. Uh, I think, um, wow, I've completely blinked on what I was going to say. I tried to use no notes, but here we are. <laughs> it's been a long morning. <laughs> So to all of the graduates here today, we now have the credibility with this degree, we have each other, and we have no excuse to shy away from the future that we know we can create together as one. For my beloved Friday, Saturday, Emma 2020, I know that we will accomplish great things together, and I cannot wait to celebrate your many glorious triumphs in the year ahead. And so now, Trevor Harris, it is my distinct honor to present to you the award. You've been with us since the beginning as a mentor, as a friend, and as an advocate. And on behalf of the Friday, Saturday, EMBA 2020 class, it's my pleasure to present to you the distinct Commitment to Excellent Award to Trevor Hill. Thank you, and congratulations to Sarah, Sasha, and all the winners and graduating students. I'm really delighted to be part of the ceremony with my friend, Dean McGlarris, uh, at his first real graduation, and all of you. Special thanks go to my wife, Michelle, sitting over here, for always supporting me, and the wonderful class for honoring me with this award. I hope your family, friends, and others present here appreciate what a special group of people you are. At our first class together, I warned you that not only was accounting going to be fun, but also that accounting was not equal to simple truth. Many of you, and all my classes actually, were understandably skeptical especially as most students expect to be shown answers rather than questions about applications and outputs. But as we progressed through the term and you appreciated and embraced the notion that in our lives and personal circumstances, we will always have to deal with ambiguity and uncertainty. As we discussed and observed so frequently in the media frenzy, there are many distortions of reality. For example, EBITDA is definitely not cash flow. <laughs> <clears throat> and we face difficult economic and geopolitical issues. These create risks, but also many opportunities. Each of us needs to question what we see, read, or hear, then go back to basics and understand the underlying reality. You now have the knowledge and ability to deal with uncertainty and make a difference. I hope you will seek out and understand the opportunities, make good choices, and be accountable to yourselves. Then I know each of you will contribute to a bright future for all of us. It has been my great pleasure to be a part of your journey at Columbia Business School. Congratulations to each of you, and thank you again for making my time with you so rewarding. So I have another great privilege and duty. My late and good friend, Nakumela Mud, um, I am here to present the Nakumela Mud Memorial Prize, which is named in memory of Nakum, the James L. Dorr Professor of Accounting and Business Law and member of the <coughs> school's accounting division for more than 20 years. It is the highest honor given to one graduate in each class for outstanding scholarship. 
The Memorial Prize for the Ember New York Saturday Class of 22 goes to Ravi Chandra Chakinala. I should mention that there is an envelope they will be given at a later stage. It's not just a shaking my hand. Uh, the Melumud Prize for the Ember New York Friday Saturday class of 22 goes to, even though it said one graduate, it goes to David Bentles and Vaibhav Malpani. Uh, the Melamud Prize for the Ember New York Saturday Class of 2021 goes to Paul Hirsch. The Melamud Prize for the Ember New York Friday Saturday Class of 2021 goes to Elizabeth Driggs. The Melamut Prize for the Ember America Class of 2021 goes to Ida Posner. The Melamut Prize for the Ember Global um, A&E Class of 2021 goes to Bjorn Beerfriend. Hopefully I spoke that. The Melamud Prize for the Ember Global Asia Class of 2021 goes to Maria Giovanna Vera. The Melamud Prize for the Ember New York Saturday Class of 2020 goes to Stephen Vallon. The Melamut Prize for the Ember New York Friday Saturday class of 2020 goes to Joe Rathbun. The Melamut Prize for the Ember Americas class of 2020 goes to Daniel Espinoza. And the Melamut Prize for the Ember Global Asia class of 2020 goes to Dev uh, Majumda, who cannot be here today. But the Melamud Prize for the Ember Americas Class of 2019 goes to Dennis Fernandez Aguila. <laughs> Congratulations again to everyone. Thank you, Professor Harris. It is wonderful to be here uh, today to see all of you at long last, um, to congratulate you on your accomplishment of the MBA uh, from Columbia Business School, uh, and to welcome your guests and loved ones to this ceremony. Uh, today felt like it might never come. Um, tonight's gala felt like it might never come, and I'm glad they're here today. Um, I had the unique opportunity to craft a ceremony with three times the number of EMBA graduates that we would normally have in the same amount of time. Um, I pulled in my expertise of having done probably 25 uh, ceremonies at this point, including some best practices from our EMBA Global A&E and our EMBA Global Asia graduations. Uh, here in New York and at Hong Kong, and also some old traditions um, from my time as a graduate uh, with faculty reading graduate names. So I have had the opportunity to choreograph a bit of a ballet or a relay race, however you want to look at it, and I have the faculty and your fellow, your classmates, uh, awardees and speakers to thank uh, for being the performers and the athletes today because it has been quite a bit to to do. Um, I want to thank you, our graduates, for your patience, for your partnership, and for your perseverance. Today would not have been possible without that. Um, we very much wanted to give you today a ceremony that felt celebratory, but also meaningful, momentous, and memorable uh, to honor your accomplishment. 
Uh, so with that said, I will say I have a favor to ask everyone. Um, if it looks like Lauren Killian and I are holding our breath on stage, it's because we are. Um, we have to be out of this tent to allow for the next ceremonies, <laughs> guests and graduates to come in, and we must be good citizens of the university and do that. We are running a little bit behind, so it's going to be hard, but I do ask everyone, our graduates, and our guests, please hold your applause. It's going to be hard. But in order for every graduate's name to be heard, read and heard, we need to hold it until the end. And then we'll go wild, and then we'll go wilder tonight at Gala at Cipriani Wall Street. So let's do that. So Commitment to Excellence winners are going to read the names, beginning with Paul Johnson for the Emba New York class of 2022. All right, here we go. Are you guys ready? All right. Jeffrey Daniel Allen, Carlos Alvarez, Mike Ambrosia, Jared Eric Anderson, Whitney Andrews, Mike Antonoy, Taylor Atwood, Marina Balbovnova, Anurag Banjari, Christina Banos, Josh Bauman, Michael Bennett, Damaris Hicks, Paul Bird, Christopher Blackburn, Fernando Capella, Ravi Chandra Chakanala, Terry Chan, Christopher Chen, Christy Chen, Ellen Chu, Kelsey Claire, Dewa Cody, Megan. Cunningham, Paulo Davila, Yu Yang Du, Michael J. Dunn III, Essen Asani, Christina May Ferrari, Caden Fitzgerald, Connie Gao, Tom. Goldenberg, Susan Griffin, William Gunther, Angie Hanna Bougere, <laughs> Brendan Harnett, Clemens Erman, Marty Higgins, Kantaro. Ori, Saad Islam, Elizabeth Jordan, George Kang, Rachel Keller, Babak, Cora oh, Menendezendad, <laughs> Ava Kong, Alexander Kutvan. Michael Cranes, Mehar Karani, Krishna Kura, Shravya Lalani, Tang Lin, Jack Linehan, Jen Louie. Louise Yi Lu, Jonathan Mace, Elena Matanina, Monatina, Arshan Makawi, Dean Mark, Connor Francis May, Nicole McShalis, Ravi Mitul, 
Nicole Mogo Mogalon, Rand Mogahan. Oh, Christiana, you're killing me. All right, Christiana Garcia de Souza Mandol Mandolfa. <laughs> Rachel Morrison Montoya. <laughs> Timothy Muller. Jaha Narapa. <laughs> Amali Nersi Redding. Dan Olympia. Olympio. Dylan Papas. Tilak Pasala. Chanat Pech San Ganam. Satya Popuri. Shitsi Rakshin. Sankar Raman. Sudha Ramaswamy. Michael Alexander Rosevic. Christy Reed, Rebecca Rourke, Brenna Kelly Sargent, Zachary Schwartz, Joachim Siar, Tierney Kajaram Singdal, Justin Seitenbach. Sahil Shah, Stacy Siegel, Lauren Silva, Divijun Raj Singh, Harry Singh, Robert Salzer, Bella Sereni, Catherine Elizabeth Sidness. Seb Tepres, Eric Thoms Thomas, Neil Thompson, Christopher Peter Tiano, Stephen Michael Tursik II, Valentina Erdaneta, Matthew Vickers, Fabian. Viver, Siri Wampen, Ross Watson, Jack Wu, John Paul Wynn, Miki uh, Sang, Fan Chi Yu, Alexander Jung, Brandon Zarafa. Flavio Celaya and Alex Zong. Thank you. And it is my pleasure to pre present the graduates of the Ember New York Friday Saturday class of 2022. Chike Agba. Alexander Itoru, Visam Akra, Alex Anepol, Brian Foley Anakino, Juliana Andrea Anis, Petro Baldon, Shanta Kumar Banishiblam. Michael Barnes, David J. Baxter, David Bendis, Brian Bonison, Alexandra Bono, Donald Bradford, Jonathan Braun, James Broadley, 
Liz Burns, Thomas Kauzak, Kinston Callahan, Stone Cow, Nick Caponia, Daniel Carlin, Alicia Chafee, Arpana Chaudhary, Phoebe Chen, Brian Chin, Catherine Leong Choi, Lauren Chung, Francis Coco Mondoro, Victor Cortese, Brianna Nicole Day, Gaurav Diora, Ryan Dillon, Christopher Brian Edgar, Jennifer Ekure, Anthony Esposito, Benjamin Esna, Lauren Etinger, Clara Daniela Pagan, Genevieve Farrell, Rosa Ku Fisher, Morgan Fletcher, John Charles Foley, Lauren Foster, Emily Fritz Enris, Estefania Garcia Correa, Jason Glass, Kate Burke, Daniel Goldberg, Jonathan Gray, Alexandra Michelle Guccioni, Robin Guzman, Colin Haggerty, William Harbour, Sydney Harris, James Hardigan, Henry Hatch, Amy Ho, John Hoggard, Nacho Huele, Lindsay Cass, Chelsea Kim, Chong Min Kim, Hung Kyu Kim, Leslie Kuo, Yoon Jung Lee, Guy Liebowitz, Michelle Levbar Klein Raiden, Bixie Lee, Corin Lomax Lindsay, Ray Bloom Lindsay, Jonathan Liu, Jensen Lo, Andrew Liu, Webhav Malpani, John Manga Williams, Catherine Manko, Gary Justin Mann, Yale Mao, Dr. Martin Anthony Martino, Nancy McKinstry, Casey Mai, Ashe Meshram, Yvette Miller, Jeff Moody, Michelle Morans, Kelly Joan Murphy, Mary Frances Miles, Shruti Nair, Adam Newpower, Jake Newfield, Ernek Zenel Nezaj, Lauren Ng, Lee Nunley, Michael O'Neill, Francisco Ordunia, Alice O, Joseph Owen, Peter Owens, Karim Otsa, Brett Palatiello, Kamini Pandit Vecchio, Anar Patel, Milan Patel, Sebastian Perez Lawrence, Priya Prasad, Molly Herf Price, Denise Nicole Pifrom, Daniela Altman Quintilla, Manasa Reddy, Barrett Reeves, Lena Renzina, Gerald Reed, Evan Rich, Helena Mali Roman, Erin Roos, 
Nora Rothman, Matthew Schmacker, Haig Leon Schneiderman, Kunal Shah, Shamira Sharifuddin, Patrick J. Shia, Perry Silverman, Amanda Smith, Austin Smith, Stephen Spalino Jr., Wesley Swansea, Sarah Ling Si, Siwood Teki, David Thomas, Caitlin Wynn Thompson, Ji Tian, Catherine Tong, Akachi Uku, Jacob Vanderbilt, Clemencia Lira Vera, Gerard Bernos, Daniel Vencini Broito, Lacey Vigmostad Gilberto, Maria Viacorin, Charlie Wong, Marina White, Benjamin Wirtshafter, Jingnan Shaw, Danielle Yane, Yifan Yang, Taylor Bernheim Young, Calvin Yu, Amir Zelan, and Chris Zeng. Quick reminder, Shh. we want everybody's names to be heard. Enrico Acevedo, Lee Adler, Tulio Aguirre, Rahul Ahulawalia, Omar Ahmad, Syed Ali, Gursahib Anon, Matthias Andrade de Souza, King Ang, Tilini Eriawalsna, Joshua Harry Asin, Vanessa Avendano, Consuela Bruno, Blake Behrens, Sabrina Becketesvich, Lana Blea, Flavio Branto de Faria, Antonio J. Bermudez, Alex Belichenko, Anna Bram, Carol Brown. Brian Callahan, Keisha Chaco, Dikcha Cholo, Gabriel Chen, Wang Sang Cho, Brian Chong, Luke Dudley, Courtney Lynn Dugan, Darren Farinas, Emily Feng. Christopher Franzi, Yoni Friedman, Enrico Galotzer, Sam Goodman, Rose Grimaras, Charles W. Gums, Jay Esavonlio, Vivian Vanessa Hernandez, Paul Hirsch, John Hilton, Karen Horowitz, Alex Shea, Hao Wang, Frank Hurley, Rocky Jansen, Abhik Jena, Divyan Shu Joshi, Angad Kell, Ashwin Kumat, Umkasa Shirvansa, Colin Kelly, David Kim, I, Aina Kim, Erin Kinney, Artie Court, Ben Lee, John Lee, Tony Lee, Matthew Robert Lucas, Richard Louis, Ryan Lonley, Bankin Lou, Peter McCartney, Jason McCallum, Claire Maureen McLaughlin, Andrea Messon, 
Alexander Myers, Shane's Minty, Omar Mohammed, Nayan Mohabatro, Keo Oliveria, Camilo Moreno, Margaret Moriarty, Kenji Nakamoro, Harry Naluli, Troy Neal, Wei Eng, Kevin Thomas O'Neill, Kimberly Pat, Nicole Padawano, John Polosco, Blair Pan, David Piper, Sarah Parvin Purstadter, Kevin Pritmore, Elizabeth Puglisi, Max Puglisi, Scott Mutsisi, Matt Salmi, Lena Saltos, Tushar Satahir, Lindsley Schneider, Daniel Scully, Buaho Sheki, Prachi Sharma, Sisi Chen, Drova Hoshetti, Amoratria Sinha, Mandar Soul, Shrikat Sripada, Cha San, Peter Chan San, Shrok Sorti, Dan Tapiero, Charlie Tricomi, Gonzalo, Gonzalo Vesicano, Jeff Wukrat, Matthew Wallace, Bo Wang, Howard Ha Wang, Martin Wellick, Edmund White, Alexander Wiggins, Thailand Vaslik, Jessica Wolf, Athena Wu, Xia Bin Zhu, Ted Yamada, Howard Yu, Rami Zechik, Fred Zelia, Jin Jin Jiang, Philip Ju, Erin Zola. Are you going to do it? Yeah. It is my tremendous pleasure to introduce the Ember New York. Friday, Saturday, class of 2021, and I would beg everyone to please be a little bit quiet to give space for their names to be heard. Thank you. I could do the same thing I do in class. Clap if you can hear me. No, never mind. All right, Pranitha Buri, Donia Acosta, June Ann, Murad Ajani, Patrick Anderson, Vladimir Anakin, William Atchison, Julia Auer, Nate Bishop, Jamie Blyer, John Bolton, Jessica Brenner, Ben Bullock, Logan Burnett, Rebecca Byrne, Vittorio Calabrese, Michele Khalil Tomaselli, Bill Callahan, Lucas Carita, Julia Caterini, Shambhu Chohan, Jen Chiang, Jeff Siansi, Maris Cohen, Melissa Connor, Kristen Amanda Cook. And as I turn the page, another please, please, a little bit of a low volume. Thank you. Frank Anthony Corvino. JP Coviello, Eric Diambra, Andrew De Joffre, Burju Derkunt, Elizabeth Driggs, Caitlin Duffy, Catherine Elizabeth Durkin, Sudeshna Dutta Ray, Paul Alexander Edelin, Fernando Ferroni, Daniel Edward Fessel. Kelly Fox, Olivia Freeland, Matthew Friedrich, Amanda Gallagher, James Galloway, Eran Ganot, Pablo Garcia Maestro Gil Caceres, Mark Joseph Gately, Muhammad Ali Gassemi, Kyle Gibbons, Ariel Glick, Oliver Gomes, 
Adam Grossbard, Manny Guerrero, Jason Goodman, Oliver Hanken, Lisa A. Hark. And again, if we could please lower the volume again, we'll get back to the same set point every time. Shh. Ah, how lovely. <laughs> Ruta Hasenberg, Alexandra Higby, Benjamin Ho, Sean Hogan, Taylor Holden, Suda Hosamane, Jake Huff, Melanie Huren, David Jackson, Isaac Johnson, Andrew Kahn, Chloe Katz, Michael Samuel Katzman, Natasha Kennedy, Vineet Khanna, Lisa Kim, George Hobart Kreitler, Jonathan Laor, Brian Larkin, Brian Lau, Christopher Lee, Michael John Lehman, Jordan Less, Joai Gary Lee, Hannah Lindberg, Katie Ann Lyons, Christmas Marquez Correa, Manisha Mardia, Molly McCurry, William McDaniel. Shh. Oh, that was so fast this time. Good job. Maura Elizabeth McGinn, Philip Mickelfelder, Ashesh Mishra, Parul Mishra, Dana Moody, Samuel Moon, Chaka Muchiteni, Megan Elizabeth Mulligan, Kelly Mirseth, Naoki Nomura, Brian Nordike, Anish Oberoi, Philip Oberzet, Patrick William O'Kane, Shane Oravsky, Amy Osorio, Greg Owens, Rich Pacheco, Dylan Palumbo, Emil Pathil, Tiffany Peck, Rinal Pereira, Damian Peretti, Dustin Paul Poole, Aaron Zina, Isam Rahimi, Sanjay Reddy, Paola Recalde, Nick Resnick, Jeremy Rich, Farron Elizabeth Rip, Zishan Rizwan, David Rosengarten, Nicole Sales, Arjun Saraswat, Leo Selya, Karam Sethi, Nisha, Nishant Shah, David Silver, Neha Singh, Graham Smith, Dow Travers, Laura Tolchin, Chris Waterman, Jero Joseph Weber, Barry Wise, Melissa Yan, Saron Yidbarek, Andy Ushef, Aver Zambrano, Angela Zhang, Zizi Zhang, Gary Zhu. It is now my tremendous pleasure to present the Ember Americas class of 2021. Paula Arango Correa. Christine Correado, Jason Cummings, Uzeo Ehi, Hugh Grant, Paul James Hanley III. Shh. Wonderful. Krista Johnson Perkins, Ronald Jones, Nuri Kalach Zatun, Margaret Knowles. Alexandria Leonard, Stephen Liu, Jonathan Lux, Jack Mizrahi, Saad Muntuzim, Rolando Nunez Baza, Pramod Pinamaneni, Ida Malloy Posner, Delisha Ramey, Diego Rincon, Annie Rosen, AJ Sastry, Cody Skinner, Eric Walker, 
Tara Lane Wenzel, Shin Zhang. It is my pleasure to present the graduates of the EMBA Global America and Europe's class of 2021. Rof Rof Agayev, Adam Akriev, Sultan Sultan Alanezi, Matthew Alt Altschuler, Bjorn Bierfrund, Shane. Canavan, Ivan Dario Chomer, Amish Dalal, Jose De La Rosa, Monica Dominguez, Trevor Ewan, Chloe Francis, Hannah Gandavia, Oleg Gert. Sudarshan Gupta, William Hane, Zara Hayat, Marilyn Joyner, Garav Kandawal, Zara Quan, Mercedes Labanca, Gavin McMillan, Joan Maes. Tanya Mansour, Fortunate Masi, Oleg Mukanov, Murtuza Nawala, Guyathri Perlin, Navid Rajput, Lakdar Rugab, Rafael Salazar. Yankai Shao, Samia Singh, Karim Subra, Olivier Silvestre, Georgios Sintelis, Nigel Taylor, Justin Terry, Pedro Torres Mackey, Albert Vandenbrink, C. Wong, and May Yang. It is my pleasure to present the graduates of EMBA Glo Global Asia Class of 2021. Mikaela Ambrodgovic, Philippe Endurand, Mirko Burkowski, Yanbin Sao, Zhangzi Chen, Ethan Chung, Antonio De Rao, Kirill Duranin, Luming Fen, Guillaume Ferrero, Willie Huang, Brandon Hughes, Stephen Herr. Stephen Ariely, Hyun Joom Kim, Asit Kumar, John Lee, Sergey Liashko, Anna Litsiu, Diane Lutran, Chang Tao Pei, Siddharth Ramani, Laura Elena Rosado Lozano, Hani Tam, Kurt Van Maal, Maria Giovanna Vera, Patrick Wang, Badebo Williams, Duncan Wilson, Derek Winder, Sihi Zai, Ji Yuan Zhang, and Xiaochen Zhang. It is my pleasure to present the graduates of the EMBA New York Saturday class of 2020. 
Grigor Eitanov, Aldo Aguilar Merlo, Helen Ahn, Jennifer Ahn, Joe Uniello, Jonathan Barr, Andrew Lewis Benton, Nicole Benvenuti, Sandy Bornal Garcia, Patrick Briggs, Alan Herval Ward Cardoso, Gustavo Castro, Dominic Serio, John Michael Chadonic, He Chal Tzu Brian Cho, Reno Chen, Lisa Chow, Anastasios Hisas, Gabriel Cosinescu, Caitlin Kronk, Nicholas A. Cucciarelli, George Curtis, Megan Victoria Daly, Kevin Allen Daw, Christopher Douglas, Chris Dowden, Sanaz June Fazeli, Colin Finerty, Daniel Fleischer, Joseph Golding Oxner, Marisol, Marisol Gonzalez de Cosio, Christopher Graham, William Gray, Melissa Greenberg, Mehmet Gulai, Sandra Ha, Kevin Martin Hannon, Ken He, William Helm, Caitlin Herling, Rebecca Herr, Tyler Harriet, Lee Colmer Howell, Melceda Oaxaca, Kisong Joseph Wang, Malika Ayer, Elliot Stanton Jones, Nikhil Joshi, George Jovanovsky, Joshua Kalendarian, Dr. Sunia Khan, Alexander Michael Kipel, Alison Klein, Vince Kong, Praveen Kumar, Amita Kurmala, Angie Lamour, John Lance, Angela Le Lee, Drew Leblanc, Thomas Lee, Adam Lev, Monica Liriano, Matthew Littman, Elizabeth Lubin, Olivia Louis, Sean Majet, Shazeb Malik, Jeannie Marmol, uh, Tommy McCutcheon, Chris McLean, Caitlin Melchior, Seth McSummer, Kerry Mayer, David Mealy, Mike Milton, Stella Misomali, Sarah Murphy, Massa Naga Nagai, Christopher Andrew Naylor, Elisa Ferris Nelson, Angela Neitherhe, Julius Laban and Galim, Masumi Nishida, Erende Ojumoga, Dean Darwin Oliver, Pankaj Parachar, JP Park, GU Park, Zubin Patel, Matthew Spicinato, Andrew Popel, Nitin Putalat, Patricia Ranzi, Stephen Phillips Reese, Christine Cameron Riley, David Rivera, Akbar Rizvi, Keith Roberts, Elizabeth Roden, Benjamin Rosen, Caitlin Samella, Kelvin Sanchez, Melissa Shaster, Mark Schmidt, Eddie Schmitz, Daniel Schweber, Sarah Salverian, Victoria Serrano, Jatin Sharma, Kim Shepherd, Michael Schmolevich, Kevin Richard Siedenberg, Mohit Singla, 
Rubin Srimal, Constantine Kathleen Stansu, Artie Tarkar, Lindsay Taylor, David Tish, Wen Tian, Rupali Tirmal, Jenny Tramsky, Elizabeth Ashley Turner, Jeffrey Townsend Turner, Arlette Umuhoza, Steve Balan, Shravalya Tirumala Valet, Brendan Webb, Nan Wu, Kiwen Tsi, Xiaoyu Ju Su, Ivy Yang, Steven Zelkovic, Cheng Zhang, Min Zhang. Please, can I ask you to keep quiet for those so others can hear their names? Everyone would appreciate it. Thank you. It is my great pleasure to present the graduates of the Ember New York Friday Saturday class of 2020 Isa Abney, Dustin Ackerman, Andrew Alborn, Shane Matthew Olshan. Eric Aldag, Morgan Amsler, Megan Arias, Luis Paulo Assis, Davison Avery, Andre Vasella de, de Miranda, Aditi Banerjee, Jeffrey Bender, Rachel Berkowitz, Ga Gabriel Blau, Victor Lawrence Burdum, Jay Brooks. Quiet, please. Shh. Zachary Jackson Brown, Thomas Stokes Butcher, Daniel Callan, Joaquin Canessa Martinez, Emmanuel Capre, Michael Carozo. Irene Castro, Ross Chapman, Dan Donald Cheng, Monica Cho, Dominique Carolyn Semina, Kade Cueva Martin, May Lee De Silva Vin, Sarah Cobb Jake Davidson. <laughs> Anna de Matas, Anthony Diaz, Ben Diestel, James Downing Elliott, Timothy Eng, Sarah Estevez, Mickey Fana, Fana, sorry Mickey, Elena Maria Ferrar, Cindy Feng, Hagar Franco Rosen. Ian Ganza, Vanessa Generelli, Caitlin Glancy, Jeremy Glick, Alex Goldfarb, Nicholas Greenberg, Soren Grigor, Hansen Gu, Dhruv Gupta, Stanislav Gushon, Elaine Page Harris Whalen, Matthew Hayes, Armand Hershowitz, Natalie Hughes, Chad Hummel, AZ Imtiaz, Rush Jain, Ranuk Jain, Saif Jadidi, Benjamin Jessen, Sarah Malloy Jubinski, Angela Chison Jung, Grace Kamenar, Colleen Busby Kane, Runga Kantidai, Dr. Ravi Kotura, Deepti Kuntala, Ryan Larson, Ryan Leach, Joanne Lee, Lindsay Levinson, Rebecca Liu, Catherine Lacosa, Andrew Philip Lorfink, 
William Reed McPhail, Jean Maria Magrini, Wyndham Isaac Makowski, Jennifer Alexandra Marcy, Elizabeth Lee Maubin, Julie McBrien, Mary Kind McKenna, Bruno Melli, Jeffrey K. Metzler, Alex Myers, Benjamin Milakowski, Kevin William Nally, Louis Napoleon, Michael Neely, Dominic Negroto, Lex Ng To, <laughs> William Norgard, Kevin O'Donovan, Daphne Ozaltun, Marina Pardi, Roseanne Park, Vishal Patel, Adam Patron, Benjamin Wilkin Phillips, Rahul Sasi Pillai, Rahul Prabhu, Kashif Qureshi, Modak Raj, Justin Anthony Radcliffe, Joe Rathburn, Flint Oliver Riley, Mike Roberts, Daniel Rodriguez, Marisa Lynn Rodriguez, Michael Rosen, Matthew Sabin, Gerard Savarez, Sasha Schechter, Daniel Schreck, Gretchen Schwartz, John Schwartz, Matthew William Sexton, Sankalp Srinivasta, Satnam Singh, Ruchi Singla, Winelli there, sh 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 sh. Joey Spagna, Akshay Sp Spirasad, John Alexander Stegling, Brian Stern, Alex Stewart, Sadaki Takenaka, Hong Tan, Carolyn Thompson, Jake Vanaman, Chinu Varghese, Solange Vasquez, Andrew Wold, Cindy Wang, Jonathan Wang, Jonathan Wong, I'm sorry, Marcus Weaver, Brittany Williams, Danielle Wright, Julia Wu, Leslie Yang, Adam Young, Bo Yuan, and Ali Samfir. Congratulations. It's my pleasure to present the graduates of EMBA America Class of 2019. Navroz Alfonso, Alex Andrew, Sara Mendoza Ahwahnan, Cesar Avila, Mika Blankovic, Yevgenia Jane Case, Juan Camilo Castaño Marin, Juan Fernando Suspedes Giraldo, Todd Michael Cohan, Alessandro Donaldson, Antonio Echeverria, Ike A.K., Alexandra Ekpiken, Pedro Estrella, Temitario Femifovo de, Dennis Fernandez Aquilar, Alexander Glasscock, Sarif Donella, Carlos Hernandez Godet, Jacqueline Kopcho, Charlie Maddock, Saad Maraca, Ankita Mehta Markan, Daniel Mikno, Cesar Miranda, Julia Nicole Moldovan, Ehav Mufti, William O, oh, Pedro Ortiz, Andy Palacios, Brian Way Pan, Manuel Pardo, 
Luis Ramos Osorio, Thiago Saldana, Diego Sanchez, Mohammed Tupac Sharaf, Jorge Esteban Torres Nader, Pedro Tarqueto, Kela Jaminski. On behalf of Professor Wei Zhang, I'd like to present to you the, the EMBA America's Class of 2020, Abdullah al muhaydeb Omar al ofi Juan Pablo Amesquita, Mauricio Arospide, Megan Bennett, Rodriguez, Rodrigo Boras Delgado, James Thomas Bradisich, Ravi Bulusu, Nicholas Chang, Trace Cohen, Ali Nicole Dana, MD, Alan Debbie, Beitu Ely, Daniel Espinoza, Diana, Diana Flores Galofre, Juan Pablo Garrido, Jesse Greer, Maritza Gutierrez Salcedo, John Hagen, John Hartman, Christopher G. Kroll, Alex Letko, Francisco Lopez Barrera, Frank Molina, Teddy Molefelder, Hande Oni, Jason Papas, Giuliano Tondo Pereira, Andrew Karate Quinn, Jamil Alejandro Rabat, Ryan Rockefeller, Kelly Rachel Rodriguez, Cindy Salazar, Zuhair Mustafa Sharif, Elaine Chisuk Sung, James Taylor, Ryan Benedict Taylor, Philippe Tebo, Tana Weissman, Ningje Zhang, Teo Zubilaga. We have our last class graduating today to be announced. It is my pleasure to announce the graduates of Global Asia, M Asia EMBA Global Class 2020. So Amrin Ahmad, Amrin Ahmad Ghazali, Prerna Baruha, Cameron Chan, Arthur Chang, Jessica Chi Ju Chang, Liel Chappelle, Praveen Dulum, Andre Glukov, Victoria Gorobsova, Huang Shen Long, E. Min Jin, Gitrius Kolos Nikovas, Oliver Kratchat, Clive Ka Lun Li, Dev Majundar, Takahiko, no, sorry, Takahiku Mazuki. Lin Ling Yun Pan, Shapiso Radebe, Ankit Ravat, Nick Rhodes, Divani Srivastava, Carl Santer. Mingo Zhang, Mark Van Grabowski, Victor Wong, Sophie Wu, Suk 
Hong Yu, Levent Jungle. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody. <laughs> Right. Uh, before I conclude, I just have a very few quick comments, but I realize uh, two of your beloved recognized faculty members are actually leaving the family. Kitendra, uh, and I want to recognize you. Thank you for all that you've done. my dear friend and consigliere, Trevor. Thank you. So thank you and congratulations to all of you, to our speakers today. Everyone on this stage and this audience is a testament uh, of this remarkable community. And also the remarkable community of 50,000 alums globally that you're joining, or some of you have already joined, uh, it might be the end of the ceremony right now and your time here, but as you know, commencement uh, means beginning, and it's a real beginning of your next chapter of your lives, one that you have all the tools to grow, explore, disrupt, backed by the reputation and strength of the school, and to really choose and make your mark in whatever you, you want to do. Each of you, you will embark on your own path, your own unique journey, but regardless of where you are and where you go, I'm certain that you will lead change. You will tackle challenges, find solutions, introduce ideas, new businesses. Some of you, like other alums before, may even invent new industries. You will innovate, you will disrupt, you will challenge the status quo the way you challenged us. You will change business, you will save society, and you will certainly change the world. And I know this because you changed us for the better while you were all here. So congratulations once again to all of you. So we have a reception at Ansel Plaza, and you're all welcome to follow uh, faculty and uh, students in the recessional in that direction. All right, thank you. Congratulations once again. <laughs>